the reason I ask that is because like, I, I hear that rhetoric a lot from Muslims. Uh, like you bring that up, mm -hmm. but um, you guys still live here, you know. And, and there's a growing Muslim population. Like, why, 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 were, why do you remain here? Yeah, but I'm not planning on remaining here long term. Nor have I been here long term. He's born here, for example. This is his country. In a way, he's born. born in Egypt. No, he's born here. So if if it depends on the individual, right? Some people are actually born here. There's a second, third generation Muslims that are staying here, right? And and for me, I just came here not too long ago, by the way. And, and I'm going to leave very soon, you know, so, since you asked, right? Yeah, 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 very soon. Do you know where you're going? Yeah, but I'm not going to say that publicly, right? But I do know where I'm going, yes. But this is the thing. Yeah, I, I, and I'm saying this with, with, with respect to anyone. I, I do not feel serenity, tranquility, and peace if I'm here in comparison to any Muslim country in the world. Just comparing just the, the feeling, the state of tranquility that I feel as a Muslim. If when I'm going to do Umrah or Hajj or any, any Muslim country, of course, Mecca and Medina have a special feeling, right? But just any Muslim country in general, hearing the call of prayer, the things that I'm telling you, just the fact that if I'm just walking here, wherever you look, there are things that you're not supposed to look at, you know? They're all over the place. If I'm uh, at, at a Muslim country, whichever that Muslim country is, let's say Morocco or Egypt or Tunisia or whichever country, most people are not dressed in that way. You, it's much easier for you not to have these effects because, okay, we look at it, okay, I'm just looking at someone. It's not as simple as just me looking at someone. There's an effect on the heart. The sin covers the heart. Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, Kalla barrana ala Indeed, you know, their hearts have been covered because of the sins, because of the evil deeds that, that we do. And, and the more you stay in the West, the more you become accustomed to these things, the less you realize their effects on you. So if you are in a place where you don't have that as much, it's, it's, you feel the difference when you start facing these type of things. So if you're not always around like women dressed inappropriately all over the place around you, you are in, a, in an environment where you don't have that. You have women dressed in a very modest, uh, proper manner. Most people are god fearing It does have an effect on your psychology. Yeah. It does have an effect on you. Just, just me feeling better psychologically. Literally, just me in that it's country. Exactly. Just, you just it's staying in the country is better. So, so, but for me here, I'm doing something here, right? Yeah. So in, that yeah, so, so th there's a difference. Like if I want to invite people to Islam, I cannot go invite, I'm going to invite people in Islam in Egypt. It's like people are there majority Muslim, right? right? Or in Morocco, or this, these are countries where people are majority Muslim. So if you want to invite people to Islam, of course you'd be in a place in which people are not Muslim, which is one of the main reasons I'm here, or we can say the main reason why I'm here. But still for, uh, again, for a period of time, not for forever. And yes, I'm not planning on staying here long term. But this is the, uh, the thing. You've got now the, many of the Westerners, especially those rich West Westerners, many of them are going living in Muslim countries, in the Muslim lands. Because of the safety there, because of all of these aspects. And they've mentioned that multiple different times, going to Dubai or going to this or that, right? We don't say these are the best places from an Islamic point of view, but they still have a sense of a Muslim environment. So UAE does have. Dubai is like a, a utopia in a sense, right? But the UAE has Islamic environment. If you go to Sharjah, for example, Shariqa, so it's a very conservative uh, community and society. If you go to Qatar, if you go to these countries, they w they're well developed from, if you want to say, from an economic point of view. And they have this Islamic sense uh, of morality still there. And you can see people in the West, like, the lay person, this is the truth, there's a whole difference, and, and a lot of people don't notice this, but there's a whole big difference between social media and the average person. Like, when you interact with average people and what you see on social media as the predominant thing, I don't think they're always correlating, to be honest. But here's what I would, I would respond to that a little bit, because mm. I would say, look, if it's about Islam, right, I don't know if it's more fitna to be in Dubai than it is to be in, in London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does fitna mean? Uh, fitna means it's like... It's a trial, a test, a trial or a bad test. effect on you, etc. It's now when I go to Dubai, sometimes I feel it's even more tempting. It is. Like, yeah, because, for example, sorry to be explicit about this, about, I mean, <laughs> since we are... Yeah, you shouldn't be. We get it, we get yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if, even if you go to the mall, you'll see everything. You, in fact, yeah. I've, I've not been there, so... Yeah. Dubai? Yeah. Okay. So no, no, but, but this is what I was saying. I was saying Dubai is different from an Islamic point of view, right? Yeah. That's why I compared it. I said Sharjah and other places in well, the UAE. They're right next to each other. So uh, if you live in Sharjah, uh -huh. you're going to go to Dubai like it's... Have you been to Sharjah? Yeah, yeah, it's right next to... It's like literally mm. right next door. Mm. Like, it's like a one... It's literally half an hour drive, maybe. Mm. So what I'm saying is that it's... Um, even if you look at the demographics, it's pretty surprising. I don't know. Dubai's got maybe about 2 million population or something. Two and a half million, three million, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then let's look at the amount of Muslims to non-Muslim ratio in that, in that town, in that place. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's comparable. I'm not gonna say it's comparable with Bradford or Birmingham, but it's getting there in terms of the population. Non Muslims to Muslims ratio. It's getting there, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like over 90% foreigners or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In terms of the. Could you make a case that it sometimes can be. I don't know. In the Islamic case, you know, the Adhan and stuff like. If you go to Morocco, Pakistan, or Egypt, it's different. Mm -hmm. But now the Khalij has become effectively like. It's, it's like a. It's comparable with a city in Europe which has got a lot of Muslims inside of it. I think Qatar is different though. Yeah, Qatar is different. Yeah. Qatar is different. That's why I, I mentioned Qatar as well. I think people in Qatar, like I've even had some friends who went and compared both. It's, it's way different. Like even simple things. They mentioned things like, for example, flags of Palestine, this and that. Yeah. They said they didn't see that in the UAE, but in Qatar, they saw everyone having flags of Palestine all over the place, yeah. right? So in Qatar, I would say. For example, yeah, it's another city. example, right? So I, I would yeah. say the Gulf. If yeah, looking at UAE, maybe there's a problem. But Saudi, uh, the Qatar, these countries do not have as many of a problems as some people try to make it yeah. seem in social media. Like when I was in Riyadh, but the Dawa, you wouldn't be able to do a lot of the Dawa. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah, absolutely. That's you. One has to think about all of the. All the things. Yeah, yeah, but living is different than coming here visiting for a period of time, right? You can always yeah. balance it in that way. But he was asking and staying, right? Sure. So I'm telling him that that honestly, living in a Muslim for me, is, maybe for many other Muslims as well, I'm yeah. not sure. But the sense of tranquility and peace, I don't know if you've experienced. No, it. I agree with you. I yeah, agree with you. if you stay in a Muslim country, I'm not talking about Dubai because I've not been there, <laughs> or UAE, but I'm talking about a Muslim country that displays the Islamic values, right? Well, even Dubai, by the way, there's lots yeah. you can do though. It's fantastic. I prefer Abu Dhabi, by the way, hmm. like in terms of the Islamic feel. I think it's really it's a fantastic place to hmm. to be in many ways. You know? Can you explain though, what do you dislike about Dubai for the people that haven't been? There? It's not that I dislike it. It's just like I, I think that when we discuss about hit like. In classic terms, they call it hijra, where people go back to a Muslim land mm -hmm. to be with Muslim people. I think if we are really going to be honest and talk about, okay, well, let's look at, for example, London or Birmingham or whatever it is versus Dubai. Mm -hmm. From an Islamic perspective, now the situation is similar. Yeah. Like all the negatives that you'll find in the West, or the things we perceive as Muslim conservatives to be negative, mm -hmm. seeing women in miniskirts, uh, prostitution, I don't know, drugs. And all, You'll find it in, F in all these places. Some of them are even more accessible, you can yeah, say, in certain yeah, parts. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it, it not certain parts and cer cer certain actions which are not good, they will be more. But this is the thing, because Dubai have been made for that reason, to be the YouTuber of the person who's coming, the Westerner who's coming, so you can enjoy in all of these like uh, life pleasures, right? So that's why it has these, these, this, these issues that he mentioned, right? Because this is their plan, right? Bring all of these people as investors with money and this and that. We're going to make the Utubia for them. We're going to give them the safety and then you can do all of the, he, if you want to use the term hedonism or whatever term, you want to use the hedonistic acts that you would like to do, right? So that's why Dubai is not, absolutely is not a good example. So when I mentioned it, I said Dubai is probably not a good example, right? Mm -hmm. I thought uh, Sharqa would be a lot different, but you said it's, it's, a little it's, little not, it's not. It's too close to Dubai. Yeah. So, so the effects are there. The effects yeah, are there. yeah. I mean, it's only just drive 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah. Like so does the West really deserve all that criticism? From what perspective? Does the West deserve all the criticism of that it's, it's crumbling and that it, as if it's the, that's the only place where you hedonism know, and degeneracy exists? But no, I mean, uh, there's a lot of criticism we should put to the Muslim world as well. Do we? Yeah. Yeah, we should put more because the, the thing is, is that the Muslim world has failed on so many different fronts now. In the last hundred years, we've been very weak as well as, as Muslims. We've got to differentiate between two different things. We, as Muslim people, we believe we have the truth as an ideology, okay? We don't believe that we are living the truth fully. Like, if you go to the Muslim world, it's not the best representation of Islam at the moment. I mean, in fact, we're the weakest we've ever been, really and truly. Like, we've had an illustrious history of 1,400 years. The majority of that time, we've been either the superpower or one of the superpowers. Talking about like the Ottoman Empire? The Ottoman Empire, the Abbasid Empire, the, the, Sp the different Spanish empires, the Muahidun, the uh, you know the Morabitun, all the is problematic from more perspectives. But uh, you got the Rashidun, you know, yeah. different the Umawis, so many different uh, empires have have shown and demonstrated Mamluks, the Mughals in in, in India, mm -hmm. you know, Pakistan as well as one place. So there were so many empires that done in in Africa you have the Mali Empire, you know, and multiple different empires there. Now we are the weakest. Point. Even though it's the fastest growing, that it's it's probably the fastest that Islam has ever as grown. As it is, yeah, it's, it's in terms of numbers, we're doing very well. Okay, but the Prophet told us there'll come a time where your numbers will be very much, but your quality will be very little. Mm -hmm. 
and this is our time. This is the time. Yeah. And he told us why as well. He told us uh, that the dawah and the weakness that yeah. are going to affect us is dunya It's effectively loving the worldly life. It's hedonism. It's like everything that we're talking about, right? Yes. So may like bring in the people from the West, exactly. to bring investments, exactly. money, but on 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 what uh, expense? On the expense of Islamic things, on the expense of afterlife. So when he says karahiyat uh, uh, hating to die, is is referring to the afterlife. It's not focusing on the afterlife, on that, on the consequences of the decisions that you make. So what is putting us in weakness is that is the majority, or you have the Muslims now making their main focus. Okay, making money, getting doing this. This has become the the focus for the Muslims. Only expenses of you know what? Okay, I'm gonna have a bank. Account, I'm gonna have a credit card. No problem. Is against Islam. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take a loan. I'm gonna do this. The credit card is wrong. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. It is. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a different opinion of like what what kind of credit card and what you're using it for. A visa. I'm not going into it. I mean, okay, sure. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's safe to say there's a different opinion on the matter, right? Like, so, but like you said, it's a different opinion that it's not around. Card, the problem with the it credit depends card. depends on what you're doing with it, and uh, there's yeah. different festivals on it. If you yeah. go on Islam QA, they, they allow some credit cards, I mean. Okay. The problem with the credit card, we're not, for, for example, not talking about exceptions to do with this extreme necessity and these type of things, we have no other option than this. Right. Generally, what is the problem with the credit card when we say it's haram? Is the element of interest. Yeah. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. So if there is an element of interest, if therefore it's haram. <sighs> right? no, what, so, they have, they have, what they have is like you have you know like an American Express credit card, and they'll get like the flight miles and stuff like that. They won't use the interest. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So some people use the credit card without the interest. No, no, but but this is another thing, right? Yeah. That a lot of, of yeah, yeah, a lot. A lot the shart nullifies. You can say nullifies the contract. But not only that is is that you try. You are in a way saying that I know. I will always be able to pay in time, or I will always, in the future, I have knowledge of the unseen, that I'm never going to be, and by the way, I've just, like, not too long ago, I had a friend who engaged in something like this, it, and it wasn't a credit card, it was, uh, uh, you know, some of the cards you get from some of the, the stores here, and then the, some money accumulated on him, and then he was asking people for for money, you know, mm -hmm. so you think that, oh, I'm going to be able to pay, I'm always in that, you don't know the future, you don't know what's going what to happen, a bad condition. It can nullify the contract, but not only this idea, even if it is that you are not sure that you always have money to pay in time. Right. No, one, no one knows the future. You can say, now I have money, and tomorrow you have zero money. Tomorrow no you one knows the future? future? But you, you except Allah. Okay. Yeah, but except God. Aren't, aren't a lot of, like what we were talking about earlier, you said that um, the Prophet Wasallam. he said that he prophesied that there would be a time where Islam would be the fastest growing religion, but people would be focused on the dunya. Yeah, so Wasn't, can't we predict the future there?